Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now after yesterday's brilliant and brutal little killer Sudoku puzzle by Kodak, Mark wants me to try this one today. He hasn't told me how difficult it is and it's by um, Mark Sweep who uh, goes under the pseudonym Frostini on our Discord server and he's very prevalent there, um, does a lot of test solving. And I've actually noticed that Mark's also released quite a few puzzles on Logic Masters Germany. I noticed that because I thought, oh, I wonder whether this puzzle's appeared on Logic Masters Germany and Mark didn't tell me. And yes, it has. And here, here, here's what you need to know about it. Well, firstly, it's got a 97% rating, which means it's incredibly popular um, amongst the people who have solved it. It's been solved 18 times. I don't know what observed means. Um, but these five difficulty stars are worrying because that means this is not going to be an easy puzzle at all. Um, five stars out of five mean that it is brutally hard. Um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to trying it. I'll read you the rules in just a second. Two things to mention first. Yesterday, we noted that we were very close to 300,000 subscribers uh, and many people subscribed yesterday as a result. Thank you very much if you decided to do that. We really do appreciate it. We are closing in on that magic number. Um, also, if you haven't tried it yet, do have a look at Yoko van Wienendahl's Puzzle Hunt, which is available free on our Patreon pages at the moment. Um, you just go there and download. There's a link under this video. And we are getting probably about, I don't know, 50 entries a day from people sending us the answer. And the ubiquitous quality amongst those entries is the praise that they're giving the puzzles. So a lot of people are enjoying them massively. And although it was aimed at kids and teenagers, Almost all the feedback is coming from adults, so that gives you an idea. It's certainly not easy, um, but it is very enjoyable, so do check it out. Now, let's read the rules of Frostini's puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside of the grid indicate the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. Digits may repeat along this diagonal, so that is normal little killer Sudoku rules. So the 40 clue, for example, here, therefore, is saying those cells those yellow cells need to sum to 40 and you can repeat digits. Now, obviously, in doing that, you can't make those two digits the same number because that will break the rules of Sudoku. But you could absolutely make those, you know, you could have you could have a whole sequence of repeated digits like that. That would be absolutely fine. Um, now, what are these dots? These are Kropke dots. Now, white dots separate cells with consecutive digits. Black dots separate cells with a 1 to 2 ratio between their digits. Um, not all possible dots are given, so there is no negative constraint. And cells containing a 1 and 2, which you can note would meet both, both criteria, you know, uh, 1 and 2 are clearly consecutive, and 1 and 2, one and two are obviously in the ratio of 1 to 2 as well, um, they can be separated by either a white or a black dot. It's the constructor's choice. So remember that if and when it's necessary. Um, now do have a go. The way to play as usual is to click the link under the video. That will take you to a page that looks just like this one where you can play on whichever device takes your fancy. And with that I get to play. Let's see if we can crack this monster. Let's get cracking and see how to start. Now there are as usual, as so often, these little killer clues just mean nothing to me. Vienna. Um, uh, because look, I mean, four cells adding to 20. They average five. It's very close to the average digit. You just, I just don't know what that means. Six cells adding to 24, averaging four, no use several cells adding to 40. There just seems to be too much latitude there. 21 in 5, averaging 4. 33 in 6, that's about the most constrained we've found, averaging just over 5. <laughs> just don't see how to use that at all. So at least we do seem to have a lot of Kropke dots though here. So perhaps we can... Actually, there are two sets of Kropke dots that look interesting. The first this looks interesting. I mean, that's a run of seven cells, all of which are affected by a continuous sequence of Kropke dots. So, 
And black Kropke dots are already a bit restricted because you can never put things like fives and sevens and nines on them. So, so if that, can I just have a look at this? If this is one, that would have to be two. That would have to, it can't go back down to one again because then this square would have to be two and it would clash. So it's going to have to go, oh, what am I talking about? Let's do the black dot first. So it's got to go, one, well, it's got to go one, two. It can't go one here, so it has to go four. It's got to go, it then can't go three, two. That's not going to work. The two will clash. So it's got to go upwards. Oh, bother. So it doesn't have to continue going upwards there because this five is not affecting this cell. So it's got to go five or seven there. And now it can't be a six here, so it's got to go four or eight. So if this is a one, you do have a restricted sequence until these cells. But of course, this doesn't have to be a one. It could just as easily be an eight. And that square would have to be a four. Interestingly, that then couldn't be two because then there would be no space for this cell. So you then have to go up again to eight, but then that's fine. You'd then go seven, this would be six. Hmm. It's probably six, three, six. Uh, no, the problem is this can be six as well. This could go six, three, six, and then there's enough room for that to go five, four here. And then this could be three, and I mean, and then that can be two even. Three, six, three, four. Ah, oh, there's just. This is this is madness this way. This can basically be anything. I thought this was going to be really restricted. But I just don't think it is. I've not even thought about twos and fours in this square, which both look like they're possible. Four two in fact four two four five yeah. Two four eight seven <sighs> three, six, three, four, five. This is madness. I'm sorry, I can't see how to use that. I will come back to it if I get nowhere else in the grid because, um, but I really hope I don't have to just note down every single option for these cells because that is gonna be very difficult. Um, so where else should we look? Ah, the other Kropke dots I wanted to look at with these ones, look, these are all connected. So, and these are, now normally in Kropke, when you get these big long sequences, it's quite a cunning trick the compiler uses. He puts the fifth uh, cell in the box with the others. And then you know you have five consecutive digits in a box. Um, and therefore you know there has to be a five in one of the cells because you can't select five consecutive digits from the digits one to nine without one of them being a five. But here, this one is sticking out. So uh, this is one, two, three, four, five. And then that could be either four or six. If this is nine on the other hand, we go eight, seven, six. That would hit the five, that would go four, six. But there's no, I mean, this could be Five, four, three, two. This could be five, four, three, th sorry, three, two, one, two. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> this is a nightmare because this basically means that this sequence is also. Incredibly open. What on earth are you meant to do with this puzzle? Why do I keep being faced with puzzles I can't do? Um, or at least not for a very long time. Are we meant to somehow, maybe you're meant to somehow use the interaction of the little killer clues with the, with the Kropke dots. But the problem is these two squares can be just about anything. Although they do have to have the same, ah, that's a, that's a, I've had an intelligent thought. Right, hang on, let's get rid of this. Right, let's just look at those two squares. These are a consecutive sequence and they are on this diagonal. 
So these two squares, it doesn't matter if they're even or if they're odd. They definitely, those two squares add to an even number. Because, you know, let's, let's try it. Let's put one in here. That will be two. That will be three. Two, they're definitely both odd. Similarly, if that's even, this will be even. So when you sum two odd numbers or two even numbers, you obviously get an even number. Now look, I've just noticed this is the same here. These two squares are connected via a sequence of dots. So those also, the sum of these two digits is also even. So exactly one of these, one of these two digits has to be even and one of them has to be odd. They, they cannot be the same parity because we need an odd number. That would be lovely if this was, if this was an odd number, the black Kropke dot would suddenly be restricted because this could only be a one or a three. So, da, da, da. Oh, got it. I've got it. This 21. Oh, that's, this is really clever. This is a really clever beginning because you, well, you do what I do. I think that's the natural way to approach this puzzle is to focus on these blooming Kropke dots. Whereas actually what you've got to do, I think, is to appreciate that there, there are just these small sequences within the Kropke dots that are forcing the parity of the sum. Look, look at the 21 clue. These two squares are either both even or both odd, so together they add to even numbers. These two squares, the same thing, they're connected. They're either both even or both odd. So these four squares are adding to an even number, which means this square is odd, which means this square is even, which means that square is odd. And suddenly, what looked like a Kropke puzzle, I think is actually a parity puzzle. So I meant to use, what is it? orange for odd because it begins with O. I have to remember these things. So that's odd. That's odd. This is even. And I'm not sure whether I can say more about this, but I can certainly say this square is restricted now. I'm not sure about the rest of it, but let, let's focus on where I know I can do something. This square having to be odd and it's on a black dot means it must be a one or a three and suddenly this string of digits is more restricted than it used to be so let's let's go back to the pencil marks i was doing if this is one that has to be two this has to be four this can't go down again because the two will clash so it must go up five six oh, then that one has the optionality and then that's four or eight now, if this is three, this has to be six. This has to bounce back down to three. Oh, I don't believe it. It can go down. It can go down and up. No, look, it can go down. It can go two, one, two, three. Oh, that is evil. Or it goes up. So if it's three, it's got to go up to four. Then this would have to be five. This has got loads of options now, so this has got to be four or six. And that one can can be seven as well. Oh no. So suddenly I thought this was going to be really good, but when this came could go down again, all of a sudden all of the options have exploded. You've got a 20 clue on this diagonal though. Oh, that can't surely that can't be small. Yeah, let's look at this diagonal now, because if this is 1, we know this will be 4. So this will be 1, 4. Those two would have to add up to 15, which means they couldn't include a 3 or a 4. If this is 3, this is 3, because it goes 3, 6, 3. Two 3s means these add up, to, add up to 14. They still can't have a 3 or a 4 in them. So this is 7 or 8. Now that's gorgeous, because that means we can get rid of some of these options. This cannot be one anymore. This cannot be two anymore. Ah, okay. So the actual options here, one, four, this is 15. This is seven or eight, so this is seven or eight. Or three, three, 
Oh, this could be double seven, or that could be a six. Although, actually, can... No, that's that can't be six, ever. Because if we're in the line where this has to add up to 14, I've already put a six there, haven't I? It's because I've gone three, six, three. Yeah, so that's not six. So there's this weird seven, eight thing here. So that that can never be seven. If that's seven, both of these have to be eight. That adds up to 16. These would have to add up to four, but they can't be three and one because they're separated by two black dots. So this is a six. That's a five. That's a four. That's a three. Oh, that gives us it. If this is three, that has to be three. That's brilliant. So now we've gone three, six. These have to add up. Oh, these have to be double seven. They can't be seven and eight anymore. Um, and we've got we've got digits. We have digits. We have we have takeoff. Um, there we go. So we go sevens here, sixes here. Uh, okay. What do we do now? Maybe I've got to come and look back down here. So this is even. This is two, four, six, or eight. So whatever. Oh no, if it's six, that wouldn't do. Six. Ah, ah. Hang on. This black dot has become restricted by these. Oh, this is very clever. Look, this this cannot be three six. Why can't it be three six? Well, one of them would have to be a six. I mean, I know that's not a great logical deduction, but once one of them is a six, what do you put above it? If that one's a six, what goes in there? Well, the answer is a five or a seven, which is impossible. So it doesn't matter which of these is the six. They are both broken by the white dots. So this is either one, two, two, four, or four, eight. Well, ah, it's not one, two. It's not one, two, because then we've got the same problem. Whichever one of these is the one has to have a two above it, and the two will clash. So this is wrong, um, which means this is either two, four, or four, eight, which means it's always got a four in it, which means there's always a four down here, always a four up there. And you can't have a five above the four because of this five. So you've got to have a three above the four. This is this is getting this is bizarre. This little run here, which is never where I, I would have thought to look. Well, I suppose it's, it's the reason it's suddenly become so powerful is this five, six, seven here. It's very clever because now now we know there's a four in here. We know that if there's a two in here, it has to go with one because we know the four has to go with three. So the two can't go with three. And if it's an eight in here, on the other hand, it can't go with seven. So it has to go with nine. So there is a one. I mean, it's not a triple even, but these two cells are certainly restricted to just three digits each. And whatever accompanies the four here will have to go down there and therefore up here. So maybe, maybe this cell is now more restricted than it was in terms of trying to work out what goes along this run of Kropke dots, because it can't be well, it can't be three, five, six, or seven anymore. So it's got to be one, two four, eight, or nine. Ah, but I can get rid of two. I can get rid of two here because if it's two, if it's two, you have to put, you have to go three, four. We know there's a four in one of those two. So that's not right. So we can get rid of two here. We can go one, two, three, yeah, and we can get rid of one as well for the same reason. Because one would put a four here and the four's down there in box six. So one is wrong. So this is four, eight or nine. All right, now I am prepared. Now I am prepared to 
a pencil mark this in because hopefully it's not going to explode too dramatically. Oh, can it go three, two, one? There? Oh, no, it can't. Thank goodness for that. If it went three, two, one, that would have to be a two, and that would be clashing in column two. Thank goodness. So it, if it's four, it has to go up. So if it goes up, it goes five, six, seven, eight, seven or nine here. And if it's Right, if it's 9, it's got to go down, so it's got to go 8, 7, 6, 5, uh, and that can be either 6 or 4. And if it's 8, it's got to go down, so it'll have to go 7, 6, and then down again, 5, 4, and this is 3 or 5. Oh dear, that is, look at this one. It's almost running out of room for all the pencil marks. This is even and it's not four, so that's two, six, or eight. So, is it something to do with the 33 diagonal then? So if that's low, if that's a two, these would have to add up to 28. So if that is low, you couldn't put four, six here. But the thing is, that could still be relatively high. That could be 8, in which case I don't think you have any problem with this being 4. That would be 4, 6, 8. That's 18, 21. These two have to add up to 12. That's, ah. Uh, um, when I say ah, uh, I mean completely acceptable. Um, oh, 3, look. Ah, actually, look. That's interesting. That is interesting. If we look at where... Well, let's start with 3. We know there's a 3 in one of those squares. They 3 can't go in any of those positions, so 3 would have to go in one of these squares in the box. But we know that accompanying the 3 here is either a 1 or a 9. Now, these squares here can't be 1s and 9s either. So those squares are from a choice of 1, 3, and 9. Now, I'm just, what I've just noticed actually, if this is 9, if that's 9, you get an 8 there, and that forces this to be a 4. So does that put two, no, we just looked at, no, oh, I think I just looked at this. I feel like I just did this sum in my head about two seconds ago. I did. <laughs> 9, 8 here and 4, 6 here makes this 8, 4 and 6. That's 18, 21. Yeah, I just did this. Those have to add up to 12. That's completely fine. So maybe the 20, is the 21 clue difficult here? So if this is 9, this is 5, so 9, 5, 3, 14, 14, 17, these would have to add up to 4, which they could if they were 1 and 3, and this was 2, or the other way around, 1, 3, 2. Is there a problem with that? No. Ah! Bobbins. Um... Sorry, okay, so this is really quite tricky. We've got to I've somehow got to the thing is there's nowhere else to look in it. It's one of these puzzles where there really isn't a lot of information. I mean it just can't res you can't go down here. I could have missed some Sudoku here maybe. 2 or 8 would go down here, 2 or 8 would go up here. The 24? No. The, four, uh, the 40 is totally open? No. 3, 9. Ah, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. If this is 9, 
You can't pair it with a 5 here. Sorry. Oh, of course. If this is 9, because this is 8, this is 4. And then the way that this the Kropke dots develop, you go 5, 6, 7 here. Now, if this is 9 and 7, surely that... 9, 7, 16, 19, it breaks. You can't put double 1 into those squares, although the software will allow it. Sudoku won't. So, this is never 9. And if it's never 9, that has to be a 2. Oh, this is... We're off. We're off. We're off and running. If this is not 9, this has to be 2, because this has to be 1 or 3. And now... No, oh, yeah, look, now there must be a 2 over here. So there is no 2 in here. So there's several things that will follow from that. 1, this has to be 5 or 7. But more importantly, if this is 4, 8, this can't contain a 1. This is 3, 9. That's not 9 anymore. 2 must be in one of those cells by Sudoku. That's just using this 2. And the 2 can't go there. So we get a 2 here. So these squares are 1, 4, and 8, which fixes... If this is 1, 4, and 8, you can see what that's going to do. It's going to tell us that this square is not a 1 anymore. So that's a 3. That means the 9 must go here. That's not 9 anymore. And bingo. Bingo. I get to say bingo today. Because now, with this being a 2, surely this can't be a 4. Because if we go 4, 6, 2, that's 12, 15. Those two would have to add up to 18, which would make them have to be double 9, which is not going to work. Um, so this is 8 which now now means that's 7, that's 6, that's 5, that's 4. This is 3 or... F ah, we don't know what that one is, actually. That one's 3 or 5. We can get rid... Ah, the 4 fixes the 4 here. That's 4, that's 1. 5 has to go here by Sudoku. We actually know the value of these, then. This is a 1, 6, 7 triple. These squares, let's get rid of the 4 corner pencil mark because we know that these are 3, 4 and 8. In fact we know that one is 8. There's a 3, 4 in the column. So we go further. These squares, let's get rid of those pencil marks. We're looking for 1, 2 and 9. And we don't know anything about those. But suddenly I feel hopeful that I might be able to crack this. Um, 3 has got to be in one of those squares by Sudoku. That's these threes interacting. 4 has got to be in one of these squares. Again, that's just those fours interacting. This diagonal now has 16, 19 on it. So this has to add up to 14. Well, I can tell you what that we don't put in there. We do not put 5 and 9 there because these have to almost be consecutive. So you can see what this square can't do the duty of being 6, 7 and 8 all at the same time. So this is not 5 and 9, this is 6 and 8. The digit between 6 and 8 is a 7. This must be a 5 or a 9 because it's either going to go 5, 6, 7, 8 or it's going to go 9, 8, 7, 6. The 7 here means that's not 7. The 2 has to go at the top in, the, in the row 1 from this 2 here. A five are oh, the five could still go here, so we don't know we don't know where the five goes. It's one of three places. Two's two oh it's close. Maybe Yeah, we can do the twenty these two cells are very restricted now because they are all you know they are almost consecutive. So if we go 3, 5, 3 here, that's 11. We need these to add up to 10. So they'd have to be 4 and 6 with a 5 between them. Actually, that's... And if it's 3, 5, 5, we get 13. These have to be 8, which means they have to be 3 and 5 with a 4 between them. And... Oh, I don't think we can... Uh, apologies if you're seeing something I'm not, but I don't see how to... 
How do you disambiguate that? Is there something available? I'm not seeing it. Um, how long have I had? Half an hour. God, that has flown by. My goodness me. That's the sign of a good puzzle, or a puzzle that sort of fully engaged your brain. Um, so where on earth do I look now? Do I look at... Is it the 20 diagonal? Let's just have a quick stare at this. We've got... Ah, yeah, well, I'm not sure it is, but that cell is restricted by Sudoku, look. That sees 2, 3, 5 in a column, 4, 7 in the row, and 6, 8 in the box. That's 7 digits, so it needs... This square is a 1 or a 9. Now, maybe... Oh, it can't be 9, sure. If this is 9, the minimum this is is 6. That's 15, 20, 21... 24 before I even get to that square and although my software does allow me to enter zeros at the moment I don't want to do that and this obviously can't be a zero so this has to be a one that means that's not a one uh, this square is restricted as well actually because it doesn't quite see as many things as this one did, but it almost does. It doesn't see the four, so this has to be four and nine. Anyway, let's come come back to this diagonal. We've got... So again, can I just rule a nine out from here by exactly the same logic I've just done? I think I can. Yeah, because if that's nine, I just do the same sum again. I end up with 11, 12, 21, 24 before I get to this square. That, that is definitely not 9. And the interesting thing actually about getting rid of 9 from this square is it removes so many degrees of freedom that all of a sudden it might be hard to get to 24. Um, let's try and get to 24. We get 4, 6, 11, 12. We need 12 more. So this, ah, that fixes the 2 because... If this is 2, I can never make these squares add up to 12, and I need them to add up to at least 12. So the 2 goes there. That means uh, nothing. We get 2s in one of those cells. This, this square is 4, 5, or 9 by Sudoku. So that's 4, 5, or 9. But it can't be 9, can it? For exactly the same reason it could never be 9 before. 9... 15, 21, yeah, that adds up to too many. So it's not 9. So it is 4 or 5. But these two have to add up. Oh, it's beautiful. These two have to add up to at least 12. So this can never be 6, because that could never be high enough. So this must be 8. That gives us the 6. That fixes the Kropke dots. That must be 9 now. Therefore, we know that's a 5. And we know this is a 4, and that fixes the 4 over here. And now we've got, what have we got? We've got 19, so we need 5, oh, 5 more, which could be done in either way. So we don't resolve this diagonal. 7 must be in one of those cells by Sudoku. 6 must be in one of those two cells. That's using these 6s. Um... So is that, ah, oh, the 8 is useful. The 8 just gives me some stuff by Sudoku. In fact, so does the 9. Oh, the 4 fixes that one. So this... Yeah, so now this can't be 3, so it has to be 6, which fixes this diagonal. So now we've got 18. We need a 3 here to finish that off. Three. 3 just gets placed by Sudoku. That's a 1 by Sudoku. This is 7, 8, and 9 all of a sudden. That fixes this one as 6. That fixes the 1, the 7. The 9 and the 3 have been available for a few moments. Wow. Okay, that was good. Um, 
3 must be here if I trust my pencil marks, and I do, you know I do. 2, 5 and 8, so this square is a 2 or a 5, this square is a 5 or an 8, and this square is a 2, 5 or 8. Three and four. Uh, oh, look at three and four in the bottom rows. Four has to go in one of those cells. Three has to go on the Kropke dot, which means it can't accompany a six. Ah, so where does six go in this box now? It can't go in the bottom. It can't go here because we know there's a three in there. So six goes on this Kropke dot where it can't go next to a seven, so it must go next to a five, which is useless. Five's in one of those two cells. The three can't go with a four, so this three must go with a two. So two is in one of those, in fact, it's in one of these two cells. We've got to put an eight look in this box. It's got, ah, so actually there is a 4-8 pair at the bottom of this box, which means those squares have got to be 1, 7 and 9. Which means this square is a 2 now, that's a 1, that's a 9. I've still not used the 40 diagonal, I will probably have to look at that now I think. Let's just keep going with Sudoku for a moment longer in case we can detect anything else. Seven, five maybe. Oh no, five can be in one of two places in box seven. That can't be a one. So there's seven, eight and, ah, uh, it's no use. Seven, eight and nine in row seven of the grid. Six has got to be in one of those cells. Um, okay, don't know. Uh, so we're going to have to think again. Let's look at the 40 diagonal. So what have I got? I've actually got quite a lot of real estate on this so far. I've got 21, 27. I need 13 more. I need 13 more. So probably what I need to do is to notate what these can be. So this one has to be one, two, five or six. Mm, okay. This one has to be two, ah, oh, it can't be two, seven, eight or nine. Ah, well, there we go. There's a little restriction anyway. Because this can't be a one, and I know these have to add up to 13, the maximum, well, you can see there's no way this could ever be 5 or 6 because it, with if you go 5, 7, that's 12, plus 2 is 14. So we can get rid of both the 5 and the 6 from here. I'm not sure the 7 will work because 7 isn't... Uh, no, it just doesn't doesn't get to 13. 7, 2 and 3 is 12. So the 7 goes here. The 7 go, oh, the 7 goes in one of these squares. No, it's just, ah, 1 is a sort of hidden single in row 1. This square's an 8 or a 9. 1, that's, no, it's not cracked it. It's not cracked it. Um, goodness. So how do I finish this? I must have... Have I used up all of the diagonal clues? The answer is no. This one is important because that gets me the 24. Ah! So that must be four now because I knew I needed five in both of those. That fixes a three and a two. Does that do something for me? It... It gives me a 2-5 pair in those squares, doesn't it? I think that's what it does. And, and it gives me an 8-4 at the bottom. 
So eight is restricted now in box three. Eight has to go there. That becomes a nine. Now we've got the nine and the three on the diagonal. This becomes a one. That becomes a six. And finally, I think we might be on the home straight. Eight must go there in box one. This is a two or a five. It must be a two. Two and five go in there. That becomes a two. That's a five. This should be something. I know that's not terribly useful. It's a nine, I think. Um, that's a nine as well. That's a seven. So this is an eight. Let's get rid of the sevens from these squares. We can get rid of the eights from these squares. This is not six anymore. Whoops, too many clicks of the space bar. Um, now, what do I need here? I need one and five. We can see that's done. Five, one, one, nine, nine, seven. Seven goes here, two goes here. This should be an eight. It's looking good. Let's click check. Yes. Wow, that was very hard indeed. A very intricate, very interesting puzzle, slightly unusual puzzle in the sense that it required a series of very narrow deductions. Um, I'm sure I did it incredibly inefficiently as well. Um, and maybe I should have, I don't know, I'm not sure I should have fully notated the Kropke dots from step one, because I think it might just have confused me. The clever trick with parity was crucial. If you don't get that, I don't, you could just be staring at that for days. And I really liked the elegance of these crop key dots here and the way they impacted on box four. That's really very clever. So Frostini, great debut. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through your puzzle. Definitely deserved its five stars. I hope you guys got on well with it. Let me know in the comments. I do read them. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider it. Let's get up towards 300,000. Wouldn't that be amazing? Thanks for watching. Back soon another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.